Hi, it's Dwyer. It is August the 20th, 2020. Let's talk boxing. Let's talk Dylan White versus Alexander Povetkin. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let me just say, and I believe this line is from a Clint Eastwood movie. I could be wrong. I'm winging it right now. Right? A man has got to know his limitations. Well, let me just say, I'm fully aware of the fact that Dylan White, for me, is a bit of a blind spot. Betting-wise, there have been at least three fights where I have put my money on his opponent and Dylan White has beaten my picks. Lucas Brown. I thought Lucas Brown just moved too well for Dylan White. I was expecting Lucas Brown to come in, outmaneuver White, beat him, have White reaching for him. I was wrong. Arguably, Dylan White's knockout of Lucas Brown is the crowning moment of his career. It's a dominant performance. White bludgeons Brown with a jab. Messes up one of Brown's eyes. It's clear that Brown can't see the punches coming. Dylan White starts opening up with combinations. Another fight that I thought Dylan White was gonna lose was the Joseph Parker fight. Now this fight's a little bit sketchy. We'll talk about it later. Right, Joseph Parker goes down off of a non-knockdown. That's how it should have been called. White hits him with something other than a punch. I believe it's a forearm. Now understand, when you see accidental knockdowns like that, maybe it's not a legitimate knockdown, but it is to the guy who got hit with the forearm who's so badly hurt that he drops to the canvas. That knockdown slowed down Joseph Parker, who then gets dropped legitimately later in that fight. I'll give Dylan White credit on the knockdown, which was a major accomplishment. Parker blows the timing of the fight. The way that fight ends is Parker drops Dylan White, drops it. Dylan White gets off the canvas and heroically survives the remainder of the round. Right? Just to understand, I had Parker in that fight. Dylan White was awarded the decision. Then there's the Oscar Rivas fight. This was an odds play. Right? Dylan White kept him outside with a jab. Rivas wasn't particularly mobile, couldn't really slip the jab, couldn't deal with Dylan White's spacing. White won that fight. So understand, I've had White's opponents in at least three fights. I may not be the person to listen to about this fight against Alexander Povetkin, who's a plus 280 underdog. The fight is taking place in the UK. We'll get back to that. Let's just talk briefly, overview, before I give a pick here. Be aware of the fact that both fighters have had drug issues in the past. Right? I'll leave it to their corners and their PR people and their promoters to explain to you why both guys have had drug issues. Just be aware, there's some smoke here. Understand, too, both fought and lost to Anthony Joshua. In both of their fights against AJ, both of them had success early. Dylan White from the pocket. Povetkin using an ambush style, jumping in from the outside. The loss to Anthony Joshua is the only loss that Dylan White has had in his professional career. Rivetkin has one other loss, and that fight went the distance against Vladimir Klitschko. 
Now, as I mentioned earlier, this fight is in the UK. It's my belief that both are at home there. Understand, this is Prevetkin's fourth fight in the United Kingdom since January of 2018. Right? His fourth fight. I don't believe he's going to show up on British soil and suddenly be confused. Suddenly be distracted. He's been there before. More importantly, he's won there before. Now I do believe that this bet makes itself based on the odds. The way I'm playing it is I like Prevetkin to win at a plus 280. I'll hedge the play with the over. Let's talk about why. First, for those with calculators, I think I'm getting value because math-wise, based on the plus 280, the odds makers are only giving Prevetkin roughly a 26.5% chance of winning the fight. I'm rounding the number for those doing the math. That's 1 minus the fraction of 2.8 over 3.8. Right? In plain English, what they're telling you is that if these two guys fought 3.8 times, Dylan White would win 2.8 times. Right? White would win 2.8 times for every time that Prevetkin wins. I think that's wrong. I think Prevetkin has a much greater than 26 and a half percent chance of winning this fight. I believe I'm getting value at the plus 280. By the way, on the Dylan White side of the aisle, you're paying a minus 400. That's a very steep price to pay in this fight. I like Prevetkin's chances, especially against these odds. More importantly, I like his chances based on the fight styles. Even though Povetkin is eight years older, he fights faster than Dylan White. Understand, while Povetkin's a switch, he can hunt you down in the pocket as he did Michael Hunter in his last fight, and that's a great fight. An argument can be made that Hunter won that fight. He certainly wins the early rounds. Out of desperation, Povetkin starts walking down Michael Hunter, who is one of the better movers in the heavyweight division. Keep an eye also on Michael Hunter, because in this big, clunky heavyweight era, with guys like Wilder and Anthony Joshua out there, a guy like Hunter might be able to outmaneuver big clunky fighters in the ring. Well, let me just say, Povetkin, this fight, because of fight styles, I believe is going to be an ambush fighter. So he's leaping into the pocket with pre-programmed combinations. Right? The fact that when he leaps in the pocket, he knows he's going to throw a left hand low, then he's going to come up top with the right hand. Because he's over he's already fought through the combination because that's what ambush fighters do. He'll be able to get off the punches faster than White who stops at times to think about what he's going to do. Right? A guy like Povetkin, I'm sure, is going into this fight after having watched Phil with his combinations already thought out. He'll have a set of five to ten combinations that he plans to throw. Then he's going to hang outside. Then he'll leap inside at an angle. Pick one of the combinations, throw it. Then he's going to get back outside. He's the more mobile fighter. He's going to use his legs. In my opinion, and just check the speeds of the combinations... 
his punches are going to come out faster than Dylan White's punches. White is going to try to soften up Povetkin with a jab. He's first going to try to find Povetkin. Then he's going to see things like which way Povetkin moves before he figures out how he's going to attack Povetkin. Povetkin's thought process is streamlined. It's a Yorkese Gamboa thought process. Right? It's a Sergio Martinez thought process. Another very successful ambush fighter. Right? He already knows Dylan White's tendencies. So when he jumps in the pocket, he'll know what he's going to throw beforehand, in my opinion. Right? I think Pervetkin is going to be faster than Dylan White. I think White's game is hurt when you're out of the pocket. Understand, an ambush fighter by design is going to be out of the pocket. Right? Dylan White has a great jab. But it's not a mobile jab. In other words, his jab is more like a George Foreman jab stands in front of you, can throw the jab, can bludgeon you with it. His jab's not an Ali jab. We're the guys up on his toes. And he's moving around. He's more mobile than you. Then he finds you and he's hitting you with the jab and he has the timing, right? Where he can hit you with the jab when you're between punches. Then he can move away. I don't believe Dylan White has the kind of jab that can maintain its stiffness if you're moving and he's moving. I think Dylan White's jab is more of the kind of jab that a Sonny Liston used, right? A foreman used. Where they're in front of you and when the two of you are facing each other and there's a defined pocket, he can bludgeon you with the jab. Because Dylan White's jab's not a mobile jab, I believe Povetkin can neutralize it by staying outside the pocket. Understand, too, Dylan White has borrowed, we'll call it, the nickname of Mike the Body Snatcher McCallum. When Dylan White gets rolling, in the pocket, he then starts dipping a shoulder and hitting you with wicked body shots. Right? Wicked body shots. He's one of the better body punchers in the sport. Think Erickson Lubin. Think Canelo. Think David Benavides. But against a mobile fighter, a guy who can be outside, then jump inside, throw a combination, then get back outside. There isn't time to hit the guy in the body. The guy's not in the pocket long enough for you to find his body. I don't think Dylan White's going to be able to land body shots on Prevetkin. You take away Dylan White's jab. And you take away Dylan White's body shots. And this is just off of Povetkin's movement. The fact that Povetkin's going to be far away. The fact that Povetkin has the type of legs that allow him to leap in and then leap out. Right? An in-the-pocket fighter like Dylan White's going to find that he's in the ring without the ability to use his tools. Let me also say, too, because I believe Prevetkin has the superior legs, and let's be clear here, Prevetkin is now in his 40s. <laughs> I'll agree with skeptics who say the legs are the first to go. Right? Contrast Lucas Brown's legs in his fight against James Tony, where he's able to get where he wants on demand with Lucas Brown today. 
and you realize a fighter can lose his legs quickly. But I believe Povetkin still has his legs. Right? You saw the Yui Fury fight. I thought Povetkin moved well in that fight. You saw the David Price fight. I thought Povetkin moved well in that fight. Because Povetkin, in his 40s, has the superior legs to Dylan White, who looks sluggish to me, in the Oscar Rivas fight, for example. I think that'll give Povetkin an opportunity to rest. If I'm in my 40s and I'm a little bit tired, I'm a little bit winded, I have to pace myself, if I'm able to just get outside on demand, then I can do that for at least 40% of a round in which I've decided to take off and rest. Let me say this too. This is a COVID-19 world we're living in. I know fellow Jamaican Malcolm Gladwell is a skeptic of profiling. Right? Okay, fair enough. Right? I mentioned that I was born in Kingston. I mentioned that because Dylan White's Jamaican. Right? I don't think Jamaica gets enough press for its contribution to boxing. But that's another story. But here, let's profile the personalities a little bit. Between these two guys, I believe Dylan White feeds off the crowd more than Privetkin. Right? Dylan White has a certain swag. He's a guy who you can tell when the crowd gets excited, he gets excited. It gives him the energy to finish tough rounds like that last round against Joseph Parker. Now, I'm assuming because of COVID-19, there's going to be social distancing at a minimum if not the complete absence of a crowd. Right? The lack of a crowd, the lack of a packed hall, I believe, is going to hurt Dylan White more than Povetkin. Let me say too, stamina. And I know, this is a 40-year-old against a 32-year-old. But Povetkin, who's lost twice, Right? Goes the distance against Klitschko. Really is only stopped inside of the distance once by Anthony Joshua and was 100% before getting hit with a Joshua bomb. One of the best punches Joshua has thrown in his entire career. Right? I have never seen Prevetkin fade in a fight like Dylan White did against Joseph Parker. Right? Understand, even though there's an eight-year time gap here between the two guys, age gap, I believe Povetkin probably has the better stamina. He's the one who needed the later rounds against Michael Hunter, who was on his way to a win. And folks, he got them to get the draw. Stamina-wise, I like the plus 280 underdog. Let me close by saying this, and I applaud Dylan White, right? He's been the mandatory for a long time. This is starting to get into Sonny Liston territory, right? Where Floyd Patterson didn't want to fight Sonny. At one point, by the way, Floyd Patterson visits the White House, and John F. Kennedy had one bit of advice for him. Don't fight Sonny Liston. Right? Eventually, Sonny <laughs> was the mandatory for so long that they had to give him a title shot. And Floyd Patterson did not make it out of the first round. Well, here, Dylan White has been the mandatory for too long. He's starting to mock the heavyweight champions. Understand, being a heavyweight champ has a lot to do with credibility. You can't exclude guys who've been on the doorstep for so long 
that fight fans start to say, when are you going to fight the mandatory? Now let me point out, and let's be clear here, I believe Tyson Fury and AJ have a problem. Right? In fact, I believe they have a couple of problems. You're going to see some belts thrown in the garbage. You're going to see some champions abdicating some titles soon. Right? There's a Dylan White problem. There's the Alexander Usyk problem. I don't believe, personally, that Fury, who I believe is the best heavyweight in the world, or AJ want to fight either guy right now. I know AJ's already been there with Dylan White. I recognize that. I understand Eddie Hearn wants you to believe that AJ's ready to fight anybody. I don't even think AJ wants to fight Andy Ruiz again. So you have a situation where you have three guys. Wilder, Fury, AJ. They want to break off, and they want to fight each other, figuring that you, the public, are not going to say, hey, player, wait a moment. You know, while I'm all for unified championships or undisputed championships, I'm also for mandatories getting a shot at a title. Right? Well, just to understand, they haven't given Dylan White a shot at the title. Now we're hearing stories of Dylan White decking. Tyson Fury and sparring, right? Understand the two guys know each other. When they've sparred before, those early rounds, if they ever meet as a pro, are going to be different than the early rounds two strangers would have, right? You can imagine a stranger in the ring against Tyson Fury is going to say, man, this dude's bigger than I thought. Right? They'll get hit with Fury's jab, and they might say, wow, this jab's different than I thought. I need to change my plan. Well, understand, a Dylan White wouldn't have to go through that learning curve. He already knows Fury's size. He already knows Fury's jab. Right? So pay close attention to what's happening at heavyweight. But let me say this. Some of Dylan White's wins have been razor close, haven't they? I'm guessing there are many of you who saw that first Derek Chisora fight. No question, White wins the second one. But that first Derek Chisora fight. And I'm sure some of you had Chisora winning that fight on your scorecards. I encourage people to revisit the last round of the Joseph Parker fight. Let's just say White is done. Hits the canvas. When he gets up, you would think he's trying to slow dance with Joseph Parker. He's holding on that much. right? He's just trying to get to the end of the fight. Now, don't get me wrong. It's a great thing that Dylan White wins close fights. Right? That's, you know, that's a talent. It's all on the line. You've got to win this round, or you've got to make it through the round. And this is the kind of guy who's able to pull it off, who's been in some big moments. Right? But what that tells me is he shouldn't be this big of a favorite. Minus 400? You mean I'm getting a plus 280 on Prevetkin, who's only lost to AJ and Vladimir? Dylan White shouldn't be this much of a favorite over Alexander Prevetkin. Folks, I know many of you are skeptics. I'm just telling you, Prevetkin's last two fights, Yui Fury and Michael Hunter, those are both difficult opponents. Right? Prevetkin is still fighting very difficult guys. If the trio Wilder, Fury, AJ, ever decide to start to give other guys opportunities, right? They'd have a hard time with Fury, Yui Fury, and Michael Hunter, right? 
I personally believe AJ has a very hard time with Kubrat Pulev, his next fight. Right, so don't get too brainwashed by the public narrative. The heavyweight division right now is highly competitive. Right? I get the feeling if AJ were walking down the street and he were to see Alexander Usyk, he'd cross the street. So would Fury. So would Wilder. Right? So here, nobody wants to fight Dylan White. The guy Dylan White has ended up fighting, unfortunately for him, just happens to have the kind of ambush style that's going to neutralize important parts of White's game, right? His jab, his body punching, his in-the-pocket efficiency. I like Alexander Povetkin. He's only been KO'd once. I like Alexander Povetkin. To win the fight at a plus 280, I'll hedge the play with the over, right? Understand that if Pervetkin wins the fight by late KO and wasn't Joseph Parker close against Dylan White, if he wins the fight by late KO or if he wins the fight by decision, you win both halves of the bet. If Dylan White wins the fight by late KO or by decision, well, you're hatched. That's how I'm playing it. Povetkin, plus 280, hedged with the over. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.